Seriously, guys, I'm speaking from experience here. It absolutely sucks to put a whole bunch of heart and soul into a video for your family travel blog for it only to get a couple of views. And unfortunately, this is a harsh reality for a disproportionate amount of family travel vlogs. Families putting in a huge amount of effort into videos and getting no views and subscribers, getting discouraged, and ultimately stopping. We were no exception to this. That was until I decided to make a series of changes that led to our blog getting 10,000 subscribers in six months. And most importantly, starting to generate revenue. And honestly, there's no reason why you can't do the same for your blog. And I'm going to share the changes that I made that supercharged my blog starting now. So my background is actually digital marketing. Been doing it now for several years. And I specialize in search engine optimization, which is where you're trying to rank websites on Google. Now, the problem is I came into YouTube with the same mindset. I was like, if I can rank a website number one on Google and get a traffic, then it stands to reason that if I can get a video to rank number one in YouTube, which is the second largest search engine, it should work in YouTube, right? And I should be able to drive traffic and then get the subscribers and have the win. So when I started making the vlogs, I solely focused on trying to rank in YouTube because it is the second largest search engine. There's a huge amount of people searching on YouTube. And this is absolutely the right idea in theory. You've got a new channel and you're trying to work out ways to get views on your channel. But one of the best ways to do it is to rank for a term that someone searches. But it has some pretty serious flaws and I ultimately found that it wasn't the best approach for a travel vlogger. And I want to use an example of one of the videos I first made on the channel which is about Legoland and whether it was worth visiting. This first video of mine really started to get traffic because it ranks quite highly for when people search if Legoland's worth it. And it's got about 12 and a half thousand views now, which is awesome. But to be honest, I was pretty disappointed because I was super excited that I seen the views were growing steady, but I only have 50 subs come from that video. And this is what I learned about trying to rank for search and why it may not be the best approach for travel blogs. When someone is searching for the answer to a question, so that Legoland video, when people are searching for Legoland and if it was worth it, they generally find the answer to the question they have and they don't need to sub at that point. So if someone's looking for answers to whether Legoland's worth it if they have kids and they see my video and they get the answer they need, they probably don't need any more information from me. And this creates a serious chink in the armor of trying to create videos that rank in search is that you're not gonna get the loyalty of an audience because you're not gonna get as many people subscribed. Now, if we were to compare that to a more recent video I've done, which is our first impressions of the Philippines, not only did it get way more views way quicker, I think it's about 60,000 views now, it also got 2,000 subscribers. And the reason for that is I'm now focusing our efforts on trying to rank for browse features and not search. People that find you through Osmosis, through their homepage or through the right-hand bar on YouTube, if people find you through that, they're way more likely to subscribe because they don't want to lose you in the noise of YouTube. So you're probably sitting here wondering, Jimmy, now, I've got a couple of videos ranking for search. So how do I actually rank for browse or how do I actually get my videos on the homepage? So here's some of the changes I made to the videos to make sure I was focusing on browse features like coming up on the homepage. The title is everything and you really need to focus on the title. You really need to make sure that the title invokes curiosity. And what I mean by that is if we take the Legoland was it worth it video, if I was going to retitle that to make it work better on the homepage and show up on the homepage and get clicks from the homepage, most importantly, I don't think I would use is it worth it because it's a very binary thing. Once someone understands if the video is worth it or not, they're going to leave. They're like, yep, okay, it's worth it or it's not worth it. I'm done. I've got the answer I need. I move on to the next thing. Whereas if that title was something like, does Lego Land live up to the hype? People are going to be like, oh, I'm curious. What hype? What is he talking about? And that generally will create clicks. And if you get clicks, then YouTube will push your video to other people that are similar through the homepage, through the recommended, through the up next. So you really want to make sure you focus on titles. If anything, do your titles before you actually create the video. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a sec. You need to also check out Jake Thomas. He's like the granddaddy of YouTube titles. And he's got a whole series of videos on YouTube titles and how important they actually are. I also really focused on making the thumbnails as hard to pass up as I could. So I think of the title and I think of what the title needs to be to generate curiosity. And then I make sure my thumbnail aligns with that. Because generally when people are looking for a video to watch, they, they glimpse at the thumbnail, they read the title, and they, they go back to the thumbnail and really think about whether they want to click it or not. So your thumbnail needs to be good and it needs to basically invoke that curiosity or reinforce that curiosity so it worth the hype it might be a picture of us cheering it might be a picture of us going and then the hype there might be a big sign or something or it might be the ride going that will reinforce the title that I have but seriously if you want to rank in browse and you want to rank on the homepage you need to make sure that your video invokes a curiosity that appeals to a broader audience instead of people just searching for is Lego Land worth it because they want to go so that's the secret and once 
I started doing that, it really supercharged the channel. Again, 2,000 subs in one video is a lot, and it made a big difference to the channel. So now that I was getting people curious of the channel through better titles and better thumbnails, I was finding that YouTube wasn't pushing my videos out to the audience, even though I knew that they would love the video, and I'm sure you face the same problem. And so the reason for that is that the regular viewers of my channel weren't engaging with my content. So I really started studying what makes other videos get views in other niches. And I found that the intro plays a massive part. The intro, your first five seconds, your first 30 seconds is the most important part of your video. And it's way more important than I ever imagined. If you can't get that right, look at it from the audience perspective. So they've seen your video, you got this awesome title that creates curiosity, and then you've got a thumbnail that reinforces that curiosity, they click, and the first five seconds doesn't align, doesn't reinforce anything, doesn't reinforce the curiosity, it's just like you talking. They're gonna be like, there's better videos I could be using my time to watch. And so they leave early, YouTube goes, okay, well, obviously no one's enjoying this video. Let's take it off the homepage. Let's take it off the uh, next page. Let's take it off the places that browse features works. So what I have done to supercharge my blog and get those 10,000 subs in six months is put all of my energy, effort, and attention into the first 30 seconds of the video from an editing standpoint. So I used to go and try and edit my videos evenly, try and make sure that they were good the whole way through. What I'm actually doing now is I put all of the energy, all of the prowess into the first 30 seconds, make sure that the first five seconds really answers the question or really invokes the aim of the video. Then I reinforce that with the 30 seconds, try and make it really flashy, try and make sure that people understand what's in the video. And then the first five minutes of the video, I'll put a bit of effort into the editing and then the, everything after that, I taper the editing off. Not only is it a good way to make sure that you don't blow out the times when it comes to editing a video, but then you put all the emphasis and effort where it's important, which is the first 30 seconds. And then the first five minutes is generally where most people will watch to. I can't stress the importance of the intro and the first five seconds of your video. It is everything. When I watch other people's vlogs now and they come to me and they say, oh, it's not growing. That's what I see. It's like your intro is not interesting. Your intro doesn't stack up against other videos on YouTube where people are like coming to your video and going, actually, it's not worth my time watching this because it's not going to be interesting. I'm going to go and watch a Mark Rober video. I'm going to go watch a Mr. Beast video because they feel more interesting in those first 30 seconds. And now if you get the intros right and the first 30 seconds is really good and it gets a high engagement, then your average view duration will be higher and the retention of people will be high because you're not dropping off as much at the start. And what happens is, is if your audience that watches your videos all the time likes it, then YouTube will start to push you out to similar people. And that's when you start to get the viral loop. I noticed that with the video that I got that had 250,000 views. That's exactly how it went. The, the first 30 seconds invoked a heap of curiosity. My regular audience of which all of my videos really liked it. And then YouTube started to push it out to a broader audience through browse features. Now, the last thing that blew up my blog and got me those 10,000 subs in six months for my travel vlog, you really need to watch all of this guys because it's super important. And the last things I just spoke about absolutely pale in comparison to this. It is your packaging. Your packaging is everything when it comes to travel vlogs. You know, it's a hard truth to swallow and it's something that I have to live with, but I really can't watch my first couple of vlogs. I really enjoy watching my latest vlogs, but my first couple of vlogs, I really can't stomach watching them. And it's not because the information isn't good. It's just the way it's packaged. It's boring. And they're perfect for home reels. Like they're perfect for family reels and just catching family up. But as someone that didn't know my family and didn't know the intricacies of my family, you would watch them and go, oh, this is really quite boring. And when I made them, it really frustrated me that they weren't getting views. But now I understand why they not. And it's all got to do with the packaging of the video. And it wasn't really until I sat down with my friends at trying something new and we had some tough conversations that we really nutted out what the cause of that actually is. So the problem with the videos that I was making at the start comparing to what we're making now is that those first videos really had no story. They had no method. They weren't going anywhere. And that was because they had no packaging. So I would go out and record a day and I wouldn't think about what I was recording. I would just be pointing at the camera at everything and just recording everything. And then I would come home and I'd have no idea on how to package it in a way that was interesting to watch. So I started changing the way I think about blogging and started to really focus on telling a story in our own special way. So before when I would just go out there and I'd just film everything and hope I had enough to like package it in something that made kind of sense. What I do now is before we even go out, I sit there and I think about what the title is going to be that will invoke curiosity and that could work for browse features. I then try and build out a rough story in my head. I don't put it on paper, I just build out a rough story on my head on what that would look like to make sense to that title. And then when I go and film, I film with a beginning, middle and end. So I go out there and I go, okay, well, every story 
story needs a beginning, middle, and end. So I go and record the beginning. I go and record the middle bit, which is the actual story that I'm trying to tell. And then I record an end. And something that's especially unique to vlogs and travel vlogs is that inside that main story, you have mini stories or micro stories that have beginning, middles, and ends as well. So a good example of this is Escape Penang. Before we left, I came up with the title that it was gonna be around world record theme parks and how there's two of them here. So I need to make sure that the beginning of the video sort of explained that, the middle of the video covered that in detail, and then the end of the video wrapped it all up and why we really enjoyed it. So beginning, middle, and end. But within that story, there's actually seven micro stories. So the, the first micro story is us actually arriving. So when we actually arrive, the beginning is us waiting at the bus stop and talking about Escape Penang and why we wanted to visit. The middle bit of that micro story is us actually on the bus and the end is actually arriving at Escape Penang. And then the next bit was a micro story and that was at the entrance, how we arrived early. So we had some conflicts. So the beginning of that is arriving and seeing no people. The middle bit is us actually sitting down and me actually replying to reviews. And the end bit of this is actually going into it. And then each ride or each section of the Escape Penang was its own micro story with a beginning, middle, and end. One of the worst things you can do when you tell a story is not give closure to the story. So you could talk about the beginning and middle, and if you don't talk about the end, then it will really put people off continuing to engage. The main reason you want to have a story that has a beginning, middle, and end, and you want to tell a story is because stories are engaging in their own way. So if you're not telling a story, and if you don't have a beginning, middle, and end to every part of your video, and every a beginning, middle, end to all the micro parts and all the little subsections of your video, then people are going to get lost in the video and they're going to leave and watch something else because you really need to tell a story. Unless you're Casey Neistat or unless you're someone that's really big in the YouTube space, people don't necessarily just want to see you walk around looking at stuff. They want to have some kind of entertainment from that. And the way you give the entertainment is by telling a story with a beginning, middle and end. So do you know how I knew I got it right with the, with the story and creating engaging stories is when I started enjoying watching the videos I was making myself. So after about Escape Penang, I really started enjoying watching the videos and going, actually, I'm actually engaging with my own story that I created. I'm actually enjoying watching them. And after we started doing that, the number of subscribers we got, the number of viewers and the, the revenue we generated skyrocketed from that point because people were enjoying the story as much as I was. And that gave me a lot of satisfaction because I was actually creating content that I knew people were enjoying at that point. Whereas before then, I was creating content and it, deep down, I knew people weren't enjoying it because I wasn't enjoying watching it. Look, I get it. You're already busy and I know what I've just mentioned feels like just more work and more things to learn about. But I would hate to see you give up on not getting the results you deserve because honestly, I was just about to give up on blogging. Then I made these changes and I was more motivated than ever to continue to vlog and continue to share our experiences of traveling full-time as a family. You seriously have nothing to lose but everything to gain by implementing one, two, or all three of these changes. And to be honest, it's a pretty awesome feeling to wake up and have 10,000 people an hour watching and enjoying something you created. The thing is, this is only half the battle when it comes to family travel vlogging. The other half is making sure that you have the right gear. So you need to watch this video here to get a peek in my camera bag and the stuff that I think is the most important gear for travel vlogging as a travel family. <music>